Katie Rickson. I am a life member of the Theta Theta chapter of Tau Beta Sigma. I am also currently the chairperson for the Executive Council for the Tau Beta Sigma Alumni Association. In my professional life, I'm a sixth grade math and science teacher from Richardson, Texas. Today, I am going to talk to you about getting your resume together as you prepare for interviews and job applications. The top points that will be covered are your content and your design. For content, we'll talk about what to include, what not to include, how to incorporate TBS into your uh, resume. And then for design, we'll talk about template, pages, sizing, and placement. We'll start with the content. It's the important stuff that you want to make sure is correctly conveyed. You will need to include your name, contact information. You'll also include an objective statement. It's essentially your thesis statement or why you want that job. Something that is a strong selling point for you. Kind of like your elevator pitch. You'll also have a section for your qualifications and skills that are relevant to the job that you are applying for. Any relevant work experience that you have that is, again, related to the job that you're applying for. And your education. You won't need to include your high school necessarily, but for sure include your college or university and any additional certifications that you have for your specific career. You won't need to include your physical address. For safety reasons, it's advised that you no longer add your physical address to your actual resume. You do not need to include non-relevant work experience, especially work experience from that's past 10 years ago. You do not need a photo of yourself. You do not need information that is not applicable to the job that you want. And you do not need to include your references. You can make a small tag on the bottom that says references upon request. That way it doesn't take a lot of, up a lot of space, including the contact information for your specific references. You can also include TBS experience into your resume. You'll have to be creative and it will probably fall into under your skills and qualifications section. Any leadership roles that you held, whether it was on the chapter or district level, can be included into your resume. Any committees that you served on, that could be relevant experience depending on your given profession. District and national experience, including any workshops that you presented, any workshops that you attended that would be um, valuable and relevant towards your given career. Now for the more fun stuff, the resume design. You have a lot of options whenever it comes to how you want your resume to look, but ultimately you want to keep it clean, concise, and to the point. Resume templates exist for a reason, and I personally believe that they should be used. So here are three examples of some resume templates that I found just using Google Docs. You can see that on all three of these resume templates, your name is the largest and most bold feature because ultimately that's what you want your potential employers and your potential interviewers to remember. Each resume template here is laid out just a little bit differently, but they all have qualities that make them look clean, that get the information across, and look professional. Now, for the design, it's really preferred that you keep your resume to one page. Now, if you have a lot of experience or if you've got different um, skills and qualifications that take up a bit of space, keep your resume to no more than two pages. You don't want your potential employer having to read five or six pages. When you go to print your resume, use a thick paper. This shows professionalism, and if you have more than two pages for your resume, print on both sides. That way, it's just handing over one sheet of paper to you in your interview. For sizing, your name, just like on those examples, should be bold and obvious. You want them to remember your name. You can utilize different font sizes, colors, whether it's bold, italicized, underlined, all the different features to highlight different sections on your resume. Use it to your advantage. Be creative, but don't go overboard. One thing that I find to be tricky is knowing where you want different sections placed. In my opinion, your name and contact information should be at the top. 
it should be right there where they don't have to go searching for it. And the next, very next thing should be whatever you find most important for your given career. For me, my objective statement is first thing after my name. I want, I'm proud of the statement that I've come up with and I want that to be a selling point. Right underneath that, I have my skills and my qualifications, then my work experience and my education last. I've been out of college for a while and I have my, I feel that my experience and my skills are more important than where I went to college. Remember, this is your chance to impress your interviewers before they meet you. One more thing, be sure to email a copy of your resume to your interviewers before the interview. This will allow them to review and print the resume for themselves, so that way when you're in, in the interview, they're not trying to hurry up and read your resume. They can look you in the eye and have a conversation with you. Now, it's always good to keep extra copies in a file folder or in a folder of sorts that you bring with you, just in case they didn't get a chance to print it out themselves. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you have any questions or anything that you'd like more information on, you can certainly reach out to me at katierickson at tbsigma.org, and I would love to continue the conversation with you. Thanks again.